is her home in Shenandoah, Pennsylvania, where Pop works in the coal mines. Good Homer, you keep flatting. Maybe I should give up, Mr. Dorsey. I told your father I was going to teach you how to play a musical instrument, and that I am. Give it to me. <laughs> That's not a musical instrument, Homer. And what you've just played is not music. Now pay attention. Good afternoon. Hi, Pop. I thought I told you two to get to your practicing. Jimmy and I was just getting a breath of air, Pop. Get back into the house and put some of that air into your horns. Come on, in here. You know where you're wanted. Come on, off with them. Off with your shoes. If you're through with me, Mr. Dorsey, I'll be getting along now. Yes, Homer. Same time tomorrow. That'll do, Homer. That'll do. Never mind. Gee, Pop, we ought to rehearse two hours this afternoon. You put in another two hours, you get your shoes back. Why is it you two always got to outsmart your old man? Other kids don't have to practice all the time. And most of them don't even take music lessons. Give me their names. I'll speak to their parents about them. I don't see why I gotta play saxophone anyhow. I'm the only kid in Shenandoah has to lug one of these things around. That's why I picked it for you, Jimmy. Nobody else plays them. You got a chance to make a name for yourself. Same with Tommy's trombone. Come on, ready now. Get your trombone. And no flatting, mind. No flatting. Ready? One, two. Mother, thanks too. Could I stay a while, Mrs. Dorsey? Sure, Janie. Always glad to have you. But the boys still have some practicing to do. I like to listen. You may call that music, but I don't. Now take it again. From the beginning. Ah, oh, Pop. From the beginning. Me heart, the way but he the beginning was right. You heard me. When it comes to music, I'll have none of your lip. When it comes to music, I'll have none of your lip. Hey, Pop, you're a comedian. <laughs> a comedian, am I? What are you sniffling about? I'm next, ain't I? Now, Tom, they're but lads. If you two don't let your father get along down to the mine now, I'll take your hand to him yourself. And no back talk from you either. I don't recollect like you learn to play the cornet in one lesson. Well, you two keep right at it. Oh, sure, Pop. We will. Be sure that they keep it up practicing. I will, Ted. Don't worry. Goodbye, Tess. Goodbye, Tom. Watch the poison minute while I run next door. They're nearly done. Sure, Mrs. Darcy, I'll watch him. There you go again. Why don't you break the way Pop told you? How about when you take off? I'm older. Now listen, this is the way it's supposed to go. <laughs> What's wrong with playing it this way? You 
wouldn't play it that way if Pop was around. It couldn't be your getting too big for your britches, Mr. Conductor. You want to make something of it? Sure. All right, outside. <laughs> to tire the both of you. But I won't. You've been practicing enough for one day. Which hand will you take? The left. The right, Mom. Clean up now. Scoot into your shoes and get along down to the picture show and take Jane with you. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. It's Tom Mix, but remember, not a word to your father or he'll skin the lock of you. Oh, we won't. Right. Come on, Jimmy. <laughs> the pies are all right, Jane. You did a good job at peacemaking. They weren't really fighting, Mrs. Dorsey. Just arguing. Hard. I know. They're Irish. Jane, there's only one thing worse than being Irish, and that's not being Irish. <laughs> Come along to the boys now. Sure, and Tom Meeks must have caught the rustlers early. Bad news, Tess. We've all been laid off of the mine. Every last one of us. Ah, oh, Tom, and just when things were looking up a little, will it be for long? Oh, long enough to stay broke, Tess. The operators ain't getting up price, I guess. Any coffee left? You poor fellow, of course there is. It will do you good to have a nice hot supper at home for once. Where's the boys, Tess? Why, I... I let them go out for a minute. So that's all this talk about Tom Mix. It's my fault, Tom. I packed them off to the pictures. The poor little tykes never have any fun. They'll have a lot less when they get home, Tess. Oh, don't talk like that. You're that strict with them, people wouldn't believe how much you love them. Tess, if you knew how much music could mean to them. But Tom, dear. You want them grown up to be coal miners, I suppose. Oh, no, sir. They've got to get that chance, Tess. There's nowhere around this coal town with less and less work each year. I've got to give them more than that. But, dear, if you... Tess, I want to have boys to get somewhere. Music's the only thing I know. They've got me to teach them that. I didn't have nobody. And they're going to learn music. If I do nothing else for them, Tess, I'll do that. You don't want them grown up like me, Tess. Ah, Tom. I couldn't ask more than they grow up like you. A finer man never lived. It takes more than love in this world, Tess. It takes more than that. Even if Mom does make the candy, what are you going to use for groceries? I'll take the order and then get some credit. Just like the regular stores. Gosh, with Pop out of work, we sure got to help. I know the boys are a bit young, Tess. But I think it'll be a good thing for them. Well, I guess you know best, Tom. Hey, Pop's gone. Yes, but Mom's here. All right, get to it. You'll excuse us, Jane. Now, Mom, you're not going to start treating us like little kids. From now on, if your Pop says you've got to practice, I'm going to see that you do just that. Maybe I've been too easy with you for your own good. Gosh, Mom, you're not letting Pop put ideas in your head. You ever raise a family of your own, you'll find out. Anyhow, I want you to do as your Pop says. Sure, Mom, if it means that much to you. Sure, we promise. Oh, uh, just to be on the safe side. Off with them. But, Mom, we promise. 
You wouldn't be me own flesh and blood if you didn't want a little fun now and then. So don't be making promises you can't keep. Off with them. Oh, boy. Mom's getting smarter all the time. <laughs> Tom, I always get my bands from out of town. Been doing it for years. <laughs> That's just it. I'm offering you something fresh. My band's got a trombone and a saxophone. A saxophone? What's that? Oh, something new for dance bands. Like the calling of angels. You like it? But, Tom, you're asking me five dollars more than I usually pay. I'm only asking you to give us a try. Well, it might have sort of a local appeal. Okay. Give me their names. Oh, they're all good uh, men. Well, sure, but I gotta have a list. Well, well, on the drums is Christy Matthews. Got a great sense of rhythm. On the fiddle, Fred Burke. On the trumpet, does myself. Also conduct him. On the other trumpet, Tom Jeffries. On the piano, Eddie Hall. Both good men, as you must know. On the saxophone, James Dorsey. Your brother? On the trombone, Thomas Dorsey. Thomas Dorsey? Junior. Now, wait a minute. Not those two kids. Not those two sons of yours. Now, hold on, Tom Dorsey, and I agreed to pay you five dollars more. Because you were going to double your business, and you will. With those two kids up there hitting a lot of flat notes, where the people would... Besides, they're always scrapping. Sure they scrap. Maybe I like me kids to be full of scrap. Because they have to fight for everything they get, and they may as well get used to it now. That's got nothing to do with this. Up there on the bandstand, they do their job. And don't be afraid of any flat notes. They're both fine musicians. I raised them to be. Tell you what. Give us a trial. And if, if you don't like us, you don't pay us. Not a dime, not a thin red cent. OK, fair enough. That's your promise. Oh, but those two kids. They'll patty mm -hmm. for them. Tom, Tom, Tom. Have a glass of beer. Pull yourself down. just once with your wife. <laughs> The boys sound real good. 
tongue. An orchestra like this, anybody sounds real good. They are good, Tess. So good I have trouble keeping up with them myself. You better not let them know it. <laughs> they do well side by side. They really balance. And they do. If they just stick together, they can lick the world. Dead set against the boys. Seems to think I can't turn my back without they're always scrapping. It's a disgrace. Shh. There's Mrs. Dorsey now. She'll hear you. I don't care if she does. She ought to be told. Mrs. Dorsey, maybe with your husband a musician, your way of life is different from ours. Now, Kate. But it's going to be all over town tomorrow that those two poor little helpless boys were forced to make a public exhibition of themselves, playing at a dance band in Gorman's Hall. And what's wrong with Gorman's Hall? What's wrong? Well. In a town like ours, Mrs. Dorsey, a public dance hall is hardly regarded as the place in which an average mother would want her children to grow up. And who ever told you I was average? I'm so different from most women. I even go around minding my own business. I told you it wouldn't do any good, Kate. Why those old busybodies? Don't cry, Mom. Oh, Mom, you're not going to let those two old Budinskis upset you. Of course not. I'm proud of you now. And I know I'll always feel that way about the both of you. <laughs> That's right, Mom. We'll show them, won't we, Tommy? You bet your life we will. They were in earnest, and the boys meant every word they said. The years flew by, and the first thing I knew they were men starting out with their own jazz band. Janie Howard went along as their singer, and it was like a part of my life had ended. Oh, there it goes. Jane, why didn't you keep your foot on the gas? Well, I did, Tommy. Well, try it again. Oh, I can't figure it out. I wonder what would happen if you press down on that gimmick. You get your weight, your fortune, and a picture of the wild canaries. Find out anything, Jimmy? Farmer back there said there's a town two miles further on. What is it this time? Oh, I don't know. It just won't go. Well, we guessed that when it stopped. Oh, 50, 60 bucks. Fix it up like new. 50, 60 dollars, huh? Just like that. Don't worry, we'll get the dough. What are we, the Dorsey brothers or the James boys? Why don't you laughing boys lay off? Yeah, just because it's a little tough right now don't mean it's going to stay that way. A little tough? I remember in Indianapolis, we lasted four days. Well, that's all we were booked for. In Steubenville, we lasted one day. 
Who stayed there any longer? Remember, fellows, into each life, some rain must... You're not saying very much. Looks like the boys have said it all. Another week of this and we're all better off back in the mines. Oh, another joy boy. It's about time somebody around here made some sense. What's the matter? Doesn't his royal nibs like the way I'm running things? No, I don't. Oh, you don't? Tommy, Jimmy! Hey, it's running! Hurry up! Come on, get in! Hotel. I wonder if they're kidding. It's better than that we stayed there last night. The lobby looks nice. We only stay here overnight, then head for Jefferson City. Evening. Good evening. Got any rooms? Orchestra, huh? Sticks and stones may break our bones, but names will never harm us. <laughs> Let's see, there's seven of them. Six. Seven. I know there's a train out of here for Chicago in about an hour. I'm taking it while I still got the fare. Now, wait a minute, Joe. You can't walk on us like this. Who's going to play piano for me? I know how you feel, Joe. But we've got a booking in Jefferson City tomorrow night, and a date is a date. All of Jane's arrangements are built around you, Joe. We've got to have you on piano. I'm sorry, Jimmy, but my mind's made up. So long, fellas. So long, Joe. Anybody else? We are due in Jefferson City tomorrow night, aren't we? Sure. So we stay. Well, that's a relief. But we still don't have a piano player. Yeah. Say, mister, know anybody in this town that plays piano? In the dining room there, we got a player piano. No, this is a small band. We couldn't carry it. <laughs> well, there is a... Uh... Oh, but he's dead. Well, he belongs Why, to that. Why, uh, there's a fella down at the movie house plays for the pictures. That's just down the street. Is he a young fella? Yeah. Foggy, check us in and take care of the instruments. Jane, you come along with us. What for? Moral support. Little bait for the hook. Thank you. 
love the gang, Bob. It's well about you, fellas. What I've seen so far is okay. Boys, meet our new piano player, Bob Burton. All right, Bob. Hello, Hello Bob. Bob. One rehearsal and we're all set for Jefferson City. Well, you can forget about Jefferson City. The date's canceled. Canceled? That's right. We just talked to him on the phone. Uh-oh, here we go again. I don't know what we've got, but they sure can leave it alone. Oh, well, what's a canceled date or two? Every new band has its ups and downs. Oh, sure. I'll wire Artie tonight. He won't let us down. He'll have his book by tomorrow morning. I'll check with you then, Bob. I'm sure we'll have some news. Oh, wait a minute. Bob, it looks like we've built you up to a letdown. The date's been canceled, and all we have left is hope and a prayer. Maybe you ought to go back to that steady job. Yeah, I guess he's right, Bob. Not that we wouldn't like to have you with us. Well, if you don't mind, fellas, I think I'd like to stick around. I, uh, I have some great ideas for Miss Howard. Oh, in the line of song arrangements, I mean. Oh, sure. Uh, sure, sure. You can rehearse tomorrow. Oh, well, fine. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. In this part, you'll work with the piano alone. It'll, well, it'll sort of give the number a lift. I wrote this song with someone like you in mind. Well, I do hope I do it justice, Mr. Burton. Oh, you will. I'll be coaching you. Jane, as long as you're not doing anything, would you wash out a couple of things for me? It's only some socks. Sure, Eddie. Put it over there. Glamorous, isn't it? Yeah. Now, look. Come in this way. When the trombone hey, picks Jane, up the Jane, do you mind? It's just a few handkerchiefs and things, as long as you're not busy. What do they mean, as long as you're not busy, not doing anything? Are you any good at ironing? Oh, I'm simply devastating on Afghans and doilies. Just try me sometime. If you don't mind, let's get back to work. Well, well, a little close harmony, huh? How's it going? Oh, fine, fine. I knew you two would get along. By the way, have you seen Tommy? Oh, he's down at the telegraph office, checking on any answer from Artie. Oh, yes. Say, Jane, as long as you've got a few minutes, I've got some shirts and Oh, stuff. absolutely. Bring them right down. Just pile them over there. Thanks. Don't mention it. Shut the door on the way out. Okay. Let's see if we can get all the way through this thing just once. To me, you're the rose of a rosary. for you and brother with Paul Whiteman band if you come immediately. Answer, Artie. Paul Whiteman, huh? Gee, that's a break for you and Jimmy. I know a lot of guys that give their right arm to play with Whiteman. I'd give both. Oh, but that means I have to play the banjo with my feet. <laughs> sure, working with Paul Whiteman might be the chance of a lifetime. But my brother and I want a band of our own. 
Not just a job. Look, Foggy, not a word of this. No talk. Compared to me, the Sphinx is a chatterbox. <laughs> Pardon me. You're the fellow with the orchestra, aren't you? Dorsey? Yeah. I've been looking for you. Let me handle this, Tommy. Let's see your warrant. Do I need a warrant to talk to you fellows? This is about a radio date. You ever heard of radio? Oh, you mean that thing without wires that makes like... <laughs> You'd be surprised how it's developed. Well, you can hear 50 or 60 miles. Anyway, we want to try a little experiment. Put an orchestra on the air. It's never been done before, not around here anyway. Oh, haven't you got something else? Thanks, chum. But when we work, we get paid. Oh, we, we pay, all right. <laughs> oh, of course, it's not much, but then there's no telling how far you might go. I don't know how the fellows will take it. You see, we're professionals. We got a reputation. Well, you don't have to use your right name. Nobody will hear you anyway. That is, uh, nobody important. Well, where do you want us and when? Bannock Building. That's in Cedar Springs, about 10 miles down. 8.30 tonight. Okay, Mr... Uh, uh, DeWitt. The band will be there. But I'll have to break it to them gently. I don't understand, Artie, booking us into a spot like this. Well, it's like Tommy said. A job's a job. What do we care, as long as we get paid? Now, this is so important, I've added two men to the band. I, I want to make it big. But they've never rehearsed with us. Oh, don't worry. These fellas read music. Now, when I give you the signal through the glass, that's when you start playing. And above all, don't forget, this is the microphone. With that, you'll be heard all over two states. Two states? We better play loud. Yeah, especially you fellas in the back. Don't forget in this part you phrase right along with the piano. Maestro, it shall be done. Thank you. Get ready. <laughs> take a solo. I felt like it. Nobody else is trying a solo. Tommy, Jimmy. We're gonna need windshields and earmuffs if you don't lay off that loud stuff. You're blowing us all down. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. Do you realize that everything you're doing is going over the air? Okay, okay. Let's hit it, boys. And this time get in your cyclone cellar. Oh, is that oh, yeah. Please! Well, throw them out. Throw them all out. Get your hands off, my brother. Stop it! Stop it! Oh, please! Hey, you! My Mike! My poor old Mike! Ah, oh, go away! Help! Please! That's all, folks.
Hey, what about our dough? We were promised a half a ceno, 50 bucks. If you blow hard enough, you ought to get a half a ceno out of this musical present. Well, how do you like that? Where's Eddie and Phil? They told me to tell you they're through. Oh, let them go. We round up two more guys and we'll be rolling again in no time. Look, I've got a suggestion for you. Makes sense, so you'll probably pay no attention. Why don't we all head for New York right now? And give up this tour just when we're beginning to click? Why, that wire from Marty raved about our prospects. <laughs> That's nice to know. By the way, here's a little something you dropped during our last bang-up job. A little reference to Paul Whiteman. Also, no bookings or no prospects of bookings. Signed, Artie. Reading my mail, huh? Uh oh they're arguing again. I guess I'd better... Are you always in the middle of those two guys? Artie's a bring-down. A third-degree gloom peddler. Oh, let's face it. We started before we were ready. We'll do better the next try. In the meantime, you and I can be working for Paul Whiteman and helping the other fellas until they can get something. Let's let it go at that. He's right, Tommy. Remember what Mom said. She wants you two together. Okay, you win. But we'll click with our own band yet. Sure we will, Tommy. I'm sorry the way things turned out. Maybe later on when we get started again, I we... I thought I got started. Come on, let's go. They went into New York then. Radio was just beginning to take hold, and the big new bands were taking hold with it. The Valleys, the Lombardos, and the King of them all. That's what I came over to tell you. Now, I haven't got any words yet, but you know how it is with any new band. Look, Artie, you've got to book that Sands Point date. We're ready now. Let's get going. I'm working on it. After all, you ain't Whiteman yet. No? No. Oh, here. Song pluggers loaded me down with some new numbers. Now, you might as well look them over just in case we... Just in case. As if we didn't have enough of this stuff.
so precious to Splendid voice tonight, Miss Howard. Ah, uh, thank you, Maestro. It must be that new gargle. Oh, that's a very unromantic remark. I had hoped that that lovely throb was due to a, a certain stirring of the heartstrings. Mm. Yes, it must be. The gargle. Bong. Ah, you two are in lovely voice tonight, Gertie dear, since Tommy and I got you out of Uncle's Three Ball Hotel. <sighs> Come, leave us go serenade a duck. I don't mean this to be a guardian angel routine, but don't you think you're wasting your talent on a joint like this? Why don't we take that Chicago over? Oh, did they call back? Sure, they still want us. It's a swell offer. It could lead to something big. Yes, I know, Bob, but... Well, you see, it's... It's oh, just that... It's just that you don't want to leave Tommy and Jimmy. We've all been patient, but you can't wait forever, Janie. All oh, the boys are bound to get started again soon, and... And they'll need me. They'll need us, Bob. You sure think a lot of those two, don't you? Gosh, we grew up together. They're like my own brothers. I want them to be a big success. And when they are, we'll share that success. Ah, oh, good evening, Captain. Good evening. Madam never looked lovelier. I'll thank you to keep a civil tongue, James. It's not on the menu, Your Excellency. Oh, too bad, too bad. Well, perhaps, shall we start with caviar, mock turtle soup for two? Oh, that would be too, too divine. Yes, it would. How is the press duck this evening? Oh, it has a beautiful crease. No, no, I think I would like the roast guinea hen under glass. Under glass, hmm. And do you have any wild rice? No, we only have tamed rice, but uh, we can irritate some. <laughs> I'll have the crease, uh, pressed duck and uh, pygmy artichokes and caper dressing. Mm. And for dessert, uh, parfait with fresh strawberries. Uh, and a demitasse with just a dash of brandy. Yes. In other words, the same as usual. Hmm. Two hamburgers with all the works. Hmm. You know, Janie, just because you were bought up in those two... You know, before I forget about it, I want to tell you about that phrase in the to-me number. You know where I... Well, pardon me if I'm boring you. Uh, oh, no. Go ahead, I'm listening. Well, as I started to say... Okay, Maestro, let's make this a duet. Jenny, do that again. What? Please, please, I'm serious. Do it again in the same order. What is this, a command performance? I've been staying awake nights digging for that phrase. Well, I'm thrilled, but I don't know what you're talking about. Well, if you must know, I'm writing a concerto. A concerto? Uh -huh. Oh, Bob, that's wonderful. But I didn't know you were interested in... Serious music? Yes. Janie, don't you know that every comedian has a hankering to play Hamlet? <sighs> a very profound observation, Mr. Burton. And all too wonderful. But do you mean to tell me that my water glass serenade actually helped? Oh, it sure did. You know how it is when you're a genius, you pick up your inspiration where you find it. I wrote this part for trombone and sax. It's modern and thoroughly American. Oh, it's beautiful, Bob. And you must stick with it. Right down to the last bar. Nothing else. Aren't you a little surprised? Why should I be? You do beautiful things with music, Bob. And there's no reason why you shouldn't continue to do them on a higher plane. I think maybe I could if... Uh, if what? If I had you around permanently. Hold the onions! Even in Joe's, that was moonlight and orchids. You know you'd make a beautiful bride. This is the season for them. I love you, Janie. No echo? I'd like to, Bob. Really, but... I know. Tommy and Jimmy. You know, if we went to Chicago... Hey, Bob, we're in. We made it. 
I just talked to Jimmy on the phone. We open at Sands Point next week. All of us. Oh, wonderful. Oh, Bob, isn't that marvelous? I wonder. Pardon me, I forgot the onions. This time, well, it was the right time. They called themselves the Dorsey Brothers Orchestra, and Sands Point was just a stepping stone to the island casino, where they had their first real success. It should have stayed that way. Awake? Let's get a little life in this thing. Now look, fellas, we're gonna get this right if it takes all night. You mean all morning? Yes, all morning. Let's take it again. Here we go. One, two. <laughs> Still not playing it right. It's too fast. That's the way the number should be played. That's the way you think the number should be played. When it's your turn to lead, you can do it your way. Well, I think I'll take over right now. Look, you've been arguing about this tune ever since you first rehearsed it. Now, why not drop it all together, Tommy? Okay. Rehearsal tomorrow at 12. Make it 3 o'clock, fellas. We've been working too hard. The band's getting stale. It's my band, too, you know. Hey, are you guys going to take me to the jam session at Arcadium tonight, or aren't you? All right, I guess we are getting a little groggy. Let's go hear a real musician. I don't like to say anything, but I thought you said you were going to the Onyx with me. Oh, yes, I did, Bob, but... Well, you see how it is with Tommy and Jimmy. I, I had to say something to stop them. One of these days, we're going to get to go up by ourselves. But, Bob, I'm so worried about the boys. They're, they're fighting about everything now. I hate to see them throw away all the things they've worked so hard to get. Just a minute, please. Tommy, Jimmy, you want it on the phone. It's long distance. Shenandoah. Well, that must be Mom. Mrs. Dorsey. Is it Mrs. Dorsey? Mm -hmm. Hello, Mom. This is Janie. Hello, Jane. We're fine. And you? That's good. <laughs> yes, Pop's right here. And how are my boys? Oh, they uh, couldn't be better. Mom. Hello, Mom. You all right? That's good. Say, what are you and Pop doing up so late? Well, we wanted to thank you and Tommy for this beautiful anniversary present. We've been playing the machine for hours. And we don't allow anything on it but records by the Dorsey Brothers Orchestra. <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy, wasn't it awfully expensive? She says it's awfully expensive. Don't worry about what it costs, Mom. Just go ahead and enjoy it. Oh, hello, Pop. Say, son, I don't like to mention it, but on a couple of those records, I noticed the tone was just a shade off on the lower notes. That's right, Pop. Pop wants you. Yes, Pop. If you take my advice, you'll put in four hours of solid practice every day. Okay, Pop. Yes, Pop. Bear that in mind. Good night. Good night. Of course, I, I wouldn't tell them, but the boys are getting so they execute better all the time. <laughs> oh, dear. Ah, just, just once more. Oh, but you've been playing it for hours. Just, just once. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> you know, Tom, a mother couldn't ask for more. We've been so lucky, but sometimes, sometimes it kind of scares me. Hmm? Oh, sure, sure. But we haven't got anything to worry about anymore, Tess. No, I've been thinking about a surprise for the boys. Something we've put off for too long. Oh, 
or you like it. Expense or no expense. But I don't understand. Shown it to anyone yet? No. He's a little touching up. Besides, I wanted to play it for you first. You know, it was written for you. I, uh, I've got an idea for the title page, too. I'd like to say to Jane, my wife. How about it, Janie? I guess I should make up my mind. I've been on that doorstep a long time. I know you're worried about those two guys, but darling, you can't do anything more for them. They're tops now. You do love me, don't you? Well? You know that title page? To my wife? Mm -hmm. Be sure and spell the name right.
complexion from white to rosy red. Good evening, sir. Don't you think we should have told the boys we were coming? Oh, it's more fun to surprise them. He tells me that he's mine. There are many boys who thrill me, some who fill me with dreams of happiness. But I know I'll never rest until he says he's mine. being fair but instead i trust him implicitly he can go where he wants to go do what he wants to do i don't care the object of my affection could change my complexion from white to rosy red anytime he holds my hand and tells me that he's mine Never say never. Please, Mr. Dorsey. Customer wants uh, never say never. But Tommy, remember rehearsal? We never did finish that number. Ah, oh, let's do it, but don't kick it off too fast. Never say never, boys. <laughs> What was that for? That's for playing it too fast. No musician could do that to me in public, not even my own brother. Why don't you lead the band right for a change? When it comes to leading a band, I don't need any advice from you. What's the matter? I don't know. Look, let's play the numbers right or not play them at all. All right, we won't play them at all. If you walk out now, it's for good. OK, for good. Tell me. Tell me. Pardon me, please. Jimmy. Stay here. This is going to go on all our lives. I've got to catch Tommy. Jane, please listen to me. Look, I think they're bound to have a showdown, and this might as well be it. Let them have it out. Let me go, Bob. All right. We might as well have a showdown, then. If you can't stay out of this thing, you'll never be able to stay out of anything that has to do with the Dorseys. And whether you were raised with them or not, I've had about all of that that one man can take. If you go now, we're through, too. For good. Pop, I'm sorry you were here. Now listen to me, Jimmy. I know what you're going to say, and there's no point in saying it. Nothing will make a bit of difference. There's no use. You've got to go after him. No, Pop. I've got to conduct this band. When I get those two together... Oh, Pop, believe me. Not even your strap will help this time. The boys just don't think alike. They don't act alike. Well, they don't even play alike. All they've got is the same temper. No, I think this is the finish. But our boys can't just break up. Jane, isn't there something you can do? Well, Mom, I, I guess I'll go with Tommy. I think he'll need me more. I want the boys to have spirit tests, but I, I never expected this. Tom, Tom, dear.
Still pasting things in the scrapbook, Tom? It's a proud collection. Just look at the newest. Dorsey's in tie for top place. Remember how worried we were, thinking they'd never get along without each other? And now look at them, sitting on top of the world. Just nice. I'm very pleased, Tess, very pleased. That is so big now, a lot of papers are just calling them by their initials. T.D. and J.D. Like USA. Are you both ready for dinner, Tom? Is something bothering you, Tess? Are you not happy about the boys? I can't say I'm not happy about them. But I'm not happy about us. Tom. Maybe it's something that only a mother would be that bothered by, but, well, the boys are a success. But I can't help feeling the family is a failure. But Tess, they've got everything in the world. This is the biggest thing there, there is in dance bands. Both of them, they, they... Yes, 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 I know. But can I have them home for dinner? Can I walk down the street with both my sons beside me? When Tommy's at home, Jimmy won't come. And when Jimmy's at home, Tommy won't come. And if it's a birthday or anniversary or Christmas, well, we get phone calls and messages and presents. But the nicest present a mother can have, her family around her. Tom, it just isn't a family anymore. I feel just the same. I didn't want to say it to you. I'd put the things on the table. Tess, where did you say the boys are playing now? It's in the letter, Tom.
my soul a longing, a thirst for love divine. In dreams I seem to hold you, to bind you and enfold you. Our lips meet and our hearts do, with a thrill so sublime. Those cool and limpid green eyes, a pool wherein my love lies. So deep that in my searching for happiness I fear that they will ever haunt me. All through my life they'll taunt me, but will they ever want me? Pretty good, lad. Did you like it, Pop? Make you think of Gorman's Hall? Gorman's Hall, you had to be a musician. If only you and Tommy could get together... And... Look, Pop, let's not go into that again. I still can't get over your coming up here without Mom. How's she doing? Better than I am, I hope.
ladies and gentlemen, winds up another broadcast of Tommy Dorsey, that sentimental gentleman of swing. Until next week, this is Frank Robinson Brown saying good night. Are you ready to eat, Mom? <laughs> Did you ever know me when I wasn't ready to eat? Hey, there go. Tommy, I don't want to begin all over again. But if you and Jimmy Mom, were only... Mom, I'll meet you back here just as soon as I change. You don't have to tell me. You didn't get any place. No, Jane. The minute you mention it, they just shut off their ears. You know, Mom... The trouble is the boys are too used to saying no to you. You are the old folks. They love you and there isn't anything they wouldn't do for you, but... Well, you know. Maybe what we need is a, a completely different approach. But we can't even get them together in the same room. Yes, I know. And I've been thinking about that. But I believe I know how it might be done. I'm glad to see you. How have you been? Come on in. Bob just went out. Yes, I know. But he'll be right back. He went out to get his laundry. Oh, then in that case, we haven't much time. Look, Eddie, I need your help very badly. You remember Bob's concerto? Mm-hmm. Well, I've got to have a copy of it right away. Do you know what he's done with it? I haven't seen anything of it since... Well, he put it away somewhere, and... You know. Well, we must find it. Uh, where does he keep his music? Well... It seems as though I have seen it somewhere at the bottom of something. You look through the desk over there, and I'll check through the closet and things. There's nothing here. Have you found anything? Not yet. Try the clothes closet next to you. Sometimes he keeps papers in there. Here it is. Oh, wonderful, Eddie. Now, look, I'm going to try to do something with this, but Bob mustn't know anything about it, promise? I won't say anything. But I'm not so sure about Bob not knowing. After all, he's the composer. You won't be able to do much without his say-so. Oh, well, that's all right. I'll change the name on it to uh, Smith or something. And thanks again, Eddie. If what I have in mind comes off, I'll send you a ticket. Uh-huh. Who? Paul Whiteman. Hello, Paul. Long time no hear. How have you been? What's that? I'm conducting the annual concert for the Musicians' Sick Fund. I'm going to introduce some new American music. It's a concerto. Oh, I think it's going to be a very exciting night. And you're just a fellow to play that concerto. Well, Paul, if it's good enough for Whiteman, it's good enough for me. Oh, that's wonderful, Tommy. It'll be so swell seeing you again. Well, looks like we're doing all right. We got one. Oh, thank you, Mr. Whiteman. I didn't think he'd say no to you. How do you like that? A concerto. Wouldn't Pop get a kick out of that? Yeah, a Whiteman concerto. Best tops in the trade, brother. Hey, do you suppose he'd be asking Jimmy, too? Are you kidding? Whiteman knows better. Jimmy will wind up leading his band. Yes? Uh-huh. Oh, hello, Paul. You want a job with my band? Uh-huh. Yeah. Sure, even if I have to cancel a date for that. Right. Well, what do you know? Whiteman would like me to help him introduce a new American concerto. American concerto, huh? I had ambitions myself along that line once. Yeah? Mm. Say, you don't think he'd want your brother too, do you? Not if Whiteman wants to keep his baton. <laughs> oh, not a chance. <laughs> Mr. 
Mr. Whiteman around? He'll be along in a minute. Oh, you must be Mr. Jimmy Dorsey. I'm Walter's concertmaster. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Tommy, just before we start on bar 29, you'll find that passage has been changed. Mm-hmm. But I think you'll find it'll play smoothly. Okay, I'll make that change right now, Paul. I'd like to have the score. Thank you. Hiya, Jimmy. Gee, it was swell of you to come. How are you feeling, partner? Fine, Paul. It's kind of chilly in here. It'll warm up. Say, hey, Paul, is this right? That's right, Tommy. Well, that change makes this part straight trombone and clarinet. That's right, Tom. Who's on the clarinet? The clarinet? Uh, as a matter of fact, your uh, brother, Jim. I'm sorry, Paul, but that's out. I said we'd never play together again, and it still goes. I'm glad he said that, Paul. It saved me the trouble. Oh, look, boys, it's such a worthy cause. Let's not let personal differences interfere. You're too big for that. Paul, I'd like to do you this favor, but trying to get us to play together again is something different. You know we've always disagreed over interpretation. Hey, did you boys forget I'm conducting, and when it comes to interpretation, I'm kind of a double Dorsey. Thanks, Paul, but I think you'll find a double Dorsey is just one too many. If you'll excuse me, I'll go. Jimmy. Never mind, I'll go. Tommy. Hey, Tommy, Tommy. Now, look, Foggy, don't you start in, too. No, Tommy, I've been trying to reach you for an hour. This is about your father. Huh? What's wrong with him? Well, he's pretty sick in the hospital. Your mother calls. She wants you to come right away. I leave right away. I call the airport, and there's a plane leaving in half an hour. If you hurry, you can make it. The brother's in there. You better tell him, too. By the time the boys reached the hospital, Pop was too weak to talk. But he saw Tommy and Jimmy standing together. He smiled and then closed his eyes. Please, Mom. You can't do anything now, Mom. None of us can. If I could only be sure he hadn't suffered. He didn't suffer. Nothing much you can say, is there? He gave us kids everything we've got. He gave us all everything we got. Forty years I've been wondering what this day would be like. And now I know. Now I know. Ma. There's just one last thing your father wanted. And only you boys could give it to him. We know, Ma. You don't have to ask us. Wait a minute, Bob. I've got to find 
finest D.H. Smith. Would you mind? We're trying to hear the music. <laughs> Burton. 